It's time for another episode of What I Made, a series with a terrible title because I can't name things to save my life, but at least it's descriptive. Today I'm going to be talking about all the things that I sewed and knitted in the month of March. There's no crochet this month, mainly because I, everything I want to crochet this year are like really large projects, afghans, and I just haven't settled on the vast quantities of yarn that I will need for those projects, but hopefully I'll make a decision in April and have something to share about crochet. What I'm going to get into today are finished projects, works in progress, what I'm hoping to start next, and then a little bit of natural dyeing because I did another avocado experiment in March. So let's get into it. I'm going to start with probably the thing I am most proud of myself for actually making this past month. I started and I finished it in about 10 days, which is great. And it's not knitting, it's actually my one sewing project from this month. I made another pair of Aeronite pants. This is a pattern by So Liberated. I made one version of it last year in like a dark brown color. Um, I'm actually wearing them today. <laughs> I'm not gonna stand up and show them to you though. Um, and I, I had a horrible experience with messing up while I was making that pair of pants and I wanted to come back and do it again. I wanted a red pair and I just wanted to do it better. So I did um, and I'm happy to say that I did everything by myself and while I made a mistake, I was able to fix it by myself and the end result are much, much better than my first pair of pants. It's kind of nice to do the same pattern again after like six months and see how much I have improved at sewing. Mainly, I can sort of sew in a straight line now and I couldn't before. <laughs> Anyway, um, so this is actually the slim hack version of this pattern. My mother modified the pattern pieces and gave them to me. I still don't know anything about how to, how to work with patterns, so my mother is my crutch. Thank you, Mom. Um, and I made this pair out of the really popular like medium weight linen from fabricsstore.com, and I'm really happy with this fabric choice. It felt very stiff at first, but it's been through the wash a couple of times now. Um, and ironed and stuff and it feels much softer and drapier, but still kind of has that nice crisp feel to it So I'm very happy. I will definitely use uh, Linen from that place again in the future. This is the first time that I ever sewed with linen and it was really nice to work with so Pair of pants. Yay. Just in time for warmer weather. I will be wearing these like for half the week every week <laughs> Now we can move on to the knitting. Um, I'll just quickly show that I did finish my gem gloves. This is a free pattern from Pearl Soho. Um, links to everything I'm talking about will be down below in the description if you want to know more about them. So last time I talked about these, I just had to do the fingers on the second glove and it was taking me weeks and weeks and weeks to get around to it. So I finished it and I went back and I changed the thumb a little bit on the first glove. And so they're done and they fit, but the thumb still doesn't fit properly. It just, it keeps sliding off. I don't know. I think that there isn't enough negative ease in this. And plus the yarn I used, it's, it's more slippery. It's got some silk or bombix or something in it. And I feel like it's just slowly creeping off of my hands. So whatever. I have a pair of gloves. I've proved that I can do it. And now that I understand this pattern better, I can modify it in the future for how, however I want to do it. So that's the gem gloves. I'm very happy I actually finished a pair of gloves because I've never fully conquered fingers before. And it's really not that difficult to knit them, especially like in my case, I just magic looped them rather than dealing with uh, DPNs. And that was a lot less finicky to deal with. Next up is the sweater that I'm currently wearing. I was working on this last month and it is now finished. Um, this is the Stripes sweater by Andrea Mowry. And I love this. I think the color scheme came out fantastic. Um, the charcoal and brown colors are the Alpaca Supreme yarn from John Arbin Textiles. I think it's in the color Anthracite and Bronze. The uh, grayish color 
is also from John Arbin. It is their cocktails range and the color White Russian. And then this red, um, I got some red mohair and then a different red color. I just mixed and matched. I, there's some leftovers I had in my stash. I think the this red is Barocco and then this uh, mohair and some of the matching um, fingering weight yarn is from San Nascarn. I don't remember the exact colors though. Anyway, scraps. It's a, good, it's a good sweater to use up um, little bits of yarn in. So yeah, I'm very, very happy with how this came out. Blocking was so important. Um, this alpaca yarn with a lot of silk in it, it just, it looked kind of messy when I had knit it. And then once I soaked it and it was properly wet blocked and dried, it just, everything kind of cinched up and it got neat and tidy and it looks great. I was so worried that it was going to be too loose that it would grow and instead I think it shrunk a little bit with blocking and it fits pretty much perfectly. The one thing that I would change if I could go back and do this again um, is I think I accidentally knit the yoke a little bit too deep. I should have taken out like one stripe and I think that this was just a mistake because I thought that I had to knit one more row to get the right length and I never re-measured it. And it's like half an inch, one inch too deep or deeper than what the pattern calls for. So for whatever reason. So it does mean that the, um, the underarm sits a little bit lower than I would necessarily like, especially with so many stitches cast on in the underarm. Um, but I'm not complaining. It does fit. It's very comfortable. It's very light feeling, but pretty warm. So I won't be able to wear it too much before I have to pack it away for the summer, but what can, what can I do? Um, the one irritating thing about doing this is that I had it completely done. It was blocked. And like I said, it kind of shrunk and I put it on and realized the arms were too short. So I had to, I ripped out the, the cuffs and I knit two more stripes and then did the cuff again. And now it's perfect. I had to just re-block the ends of the sleeves and it came out great, but it's annoying when you think you're 100% done with a project and then you have to go fix that one thing. It took me like one evening to do, but whatever. So yeah, I am super happy with this sweater. I have enough leftovers of all the main colors except for the red colors that I could probably do a second one if I just got uh, another color maybe to like replace the red with something else. I have an idea. It might be a gift for somebody. We'll see. <laughs> Cause I, I could knit this sweater over and over and over again. It's really great. And then the last finished object I have to show you guys today is this thing. Um, let me see if I can actually put this on over this sweater. Okay, now you can see it a little bit better now. Um, this is my Talervo cardigan. This is one of the patterns that I said last time I wanted to do, and I made the whole thing in like, I don't know, two, three weeks. <laughs> it's a fast knit though. Um, it's done in pretty, pretty thick yarn, like air and weight yarn and on big needles. So even though it's cabled, it has this really, um, like undulating pattern done with like staggered twists. Um, that was super easy to do and really fast to do once I figured out how to do it without a cable needle. That's it's so much faster to do cables when you're not using a cable needle. Um, so yeah, this just flew off, off the needles for me and I loved making it. So Talervo is a pattern by Sari Nordland. This is from um, a past issue of Pom Pom Quarterly. The theme of that one was terrain and I love that issue. There are multiple things from, from that magazine I really want to make. This is the second thing I've made from it. And I used the like recommended yarn. It's De Redom Natura Gilead in the color Aster, which is actually one of the colors used in the magazine as well. I was a little bit worried about how it would look on me. Like after I bought the yarn, I was like, is this too pale? Is this too cool toned? Is it gonna make me look sick when I wear it? But I think it's actually quite nice. Well, we'll see how it looks in the winter when I'm super, super pale, I guess. But yeah, I'm very happy with it. And I'm saying that it's done, but actually I still need to sew on the buttons. I was gonna do that last night while I was watching a movie and I just 
didn't. <laughs> But I'm calling it done because it is completely blocked and I've actually worn it out and about multiple times. So it is a perfectly functional cardigan and I love it. I do think it's one that I need to wear buttoned up though to keep it from like slowly falling off my shoulders. I feel like it's kind of narrow shouldered or because it's got that v-neck shaping it doesn't, I don't know, I don't know. Um, whatever next cardigan I make will maybe not have a v-neck shape because I'm always trying to pull my cardigans shut like this <laughs> and they're usually not shaped for that but whatever so yeah as you can probably tell I am super happy about this project and I loved knitting on it I loved this yarn um I'm not gonna get any more of the yarn until I've worn this cardigan a little bit I want to see how it wears like what's the wear and tear on this yarn look like it's um it's semi woolen spun so it has some of the um, light, airy qualities of a woolen spun yarn, while also um, having some of the sturdiness and the twist of a plied yarn, of a, of a worsted spun yarn. So it feels very um, dense isn't quite the word, but it, you just hold the yarn. It's so light, but it doesn't feel fragile, which is what I've experienced with some like 100% woolen spun yarns so light and airy but super easy to pull apart which can be a bit scary when you're knitting with it <laughs> so i would love to work with this yarn in the future especially if it doesn't fall apart like is it just me or do a lot of people not really talk about how long garments last like how sturdy the yarn is how it wears um, I see a lot of beautiful things that people have knitted and crocheted and what I really want to know is what does that thing look like two years in the future when you've worn it a couple hundred times or whatever like does it does it actually last because if you're gonna make something that's so beautiful that takes so many materials so much time so much money is it worth it do you actually get to wear it or is it just gonna turn into a mess because I've like I've made some things that have pilled so badly like pilled and felted after a couple of wears and they're just gross and there's not much you can do to save it but whatever I'm just rambling now um, but yeah if this if this sweater or this cardigan I should say um, wears quite well I will try to get more of this yarn um, I have another sweater one of Thea Coleman's newest patterns, Upper West Side, I think is what it's called, that's done with this yarn, and it's so beautiful. I wanna make it so badly. All right, moving on to works in progress. I have three things to show you that I am actively working on. Uh, the first one is the beginning of my librarian pullover. This is a pattern by Skein Deer Knits, and it has this um, diamond pattern on it. It looks like it's done with cables, but it's actually um, using kind of twisted stitches and knit two togethers and SSKs to create these slanting stitches. It's really, really fun and super easy to knit. This is another project that's going to happen really fast. I think this much is about two days worth of knitting guys but once again it's done in a really thick yarn and on big needles so for this i'm using this beautiful yarn this is a lovely like deep olivey green color um, this is knit picks twill a worsted slash air and weight yarn in the color fiddlehead and i bought this specifically because it was the right weight and a green color that i really enjoyed I'm a little bit nervous about how it's going to work out with this project because it is, it's a very high twist, um, super wash yarn and I I'm just a little bit worried that the really fantastic stitch definition is going to highlight the wonkiness of my stitches. I don't know if you can see that or not, but basically whenever I'm doing these like double knitted stitches to create the twists, um, my knit two together stitches look very odd and my SSKs look much smoother. So I feel like the, the lines are going well. You can really see that diamond pattern, but if you look close, the stitches are just kind of jogging a little bit. And I don't know if that's my technique or if it's just the slipperiness of the yarn because super wash yarn, it just, 
it's a little bit more slippery, slidey. It's not as fuzzy necessarily, I guess, or at least this particular superwash yarn. So I don't know, it's gonna be really fun. And this is the first time I've been working on a sweater that's meant to fit pretty tightly. So I'm hoping that I got the size right. <laughs> It's knit from the bottom up and then I need to uh, when I'm when I'm done getting it up to the the armpit area I need to knit the sleeves from the cuff up and then attach them It's supposed to have a method of attaching the sleeves that kind of looks like a set in sleeve rather than like a raglan decrease or whatever And I'm really excited about that to see how it's gonna fit together I don't completely understand the construction of this sweater even though I've done uh, bottom-up constructions where you attach the sleeves like that's that's how the Talerville cardigan was done and it's the second time I've done something like that but it was more like a bottom-up raglan which I understand versus this method so I'm excited for it and I'm really happy with my color choice <laughs> if nothing else I'm enjoying the color this next work in progress is a completely random cast on I had no intentions of making this until I pulled out this yarn from Stash and was like, I was gonna use this for something, but I changed my mind. What do I wanna do with it? So I'm doing this. <laughs> this is the beginnings of an azimuth tank top. It's a pattern by Julia Wilkins, I think. It's another pattern from Pom Pom Quarterly. This is from the last summer's issue. I, re I forget what the theme of that issue was, but it's got a lot of tank tops and vests and stuff in it. So this is brioche, which is why I picked it. If you look at it, it's got this very stretchy rib effect to it. And that is the, the brioche stitch. But in this case, it's brioche single color rather than um, one color on one side and the other color on, on the other side. So I, I picked this because I had this blue yarn already caked up for a project I decided ultimately I, I didn't want to make. Um, and I thought this is a very summery color. Like if I'm gonna wear this, it needs to be summer. I need to have a tan. So what can I make that hopefully has brioche that would be good for summer? That being said, I have no idea if this is gonna work out. Um, I'm knitting it more tightly because I wasn't happy with the looseness of the fabric when I was trying to get gauge for the pattern. So I went down a couple needle sizes, did a different swatch, did some math, and I'm using, I think, size four's stitch count to try to get the size two measurements. And because brioche is so stretchy, and because it's gonna grow when it's blocked, I don't actually know if it will be the right size. I suspect it's gonna be too big and I may I may not have quite enough yarn because I only have two skeins of this blue yarn. And there are these eyelet rows that are done in just a, a contrasting color. And I'm using just some leftover bits and bobs for that, but most of it's gonna be in the blue. So I plan on knitting the body until I run out of the first skein and then doing some math based on, on that to see if I might have enough to do the cropped version because this pattern comes in a cropped version and a longer one and I may just have to do the cropped one. If it's not the right size or fit for me, it can go in the gift pile. <laughs> really this is just a fun knit because it's it's my plain knitting. I've, I've worked a lot on this while listening to things in work meetings and I don't have to think about it. My hands just do the motion and I think it's worth having projects on hand that are just for the the mindless knitting. I don't necessarily care so much about the finished project. I care about the the process and having my hands busy and and being able to do something that's soothing and monotonous is is very nice. So We'll see what happens with this. You may never see it again if I rip it out, or you may see it again briefly before I get rid of it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and the last thing that I have started but have very little to show you is the Handsome Chris Pullover. This is the heavily cabled sweater that's famous from the movie Knives Out. Chris Evans' character Ransom wears it in a couple of scenes and it basically took the internet by storm. Everybody loves this sweater. And I decided I wanted to attempt it. So I bought yarn for it. And this is Knit Picks Simply Wool, I think. 
yes, Simply Wool in the color Wordsworth, which is kind of this light grayish brown color. I think this particular sweater looks amazing in a really like a white or a cream color. It really makes it pop, but I'm making this for myself and I don't wear white especially in the winter. So I had to go with a slightly darker neutral and I think this will work. So I have started this in the sense that I have done a swatch for it. This is not blocked yet. Um, I knit this while re-watching the movie, in fact, and then realized I'd made a mistake. I missed the twisted stitch columns on either side of the diamond pattern. <laughs> Anyway, I need to do another swatch and then wet block them because I think that this one, which I used um, 3.75 millimeter needles to do this, and I think I need to go down to a three and a half millimeter needle to get it quite dense enough. My, my diamond cable pattern is a little bit bigger than the pattern indicates that it should be in the, in the gauge section. So yeah, I'll make one more swatch and read, read the charts correctly this time and see what I think. Um, and talking about swatching, I recently learned about how to encode the size of your needle in your swatch, and this is brilliant. This is helping me out so much. Um, basically, Anushka from the Crimson Stitchery, which is a knitting a crochet podcast here on YouTube, she did a series on how to swatch recently. And in, I think, the first video in that series, she talks about how to use yarn overs and purl stitches to encode the millimeter size of your needles in your swatch. And it's it's brilliant. I wish that I had learned about this before because it's so incredibly handy. I have swatches from previous projects where I didn't correctly note my needle size. And so when I go back and like, I want to make this pattern again, I want to do it in the same needle size, but I don't remember what it was. And I would know if I had put it into the swatch. So you can kind of see at the very bottom there. Um, so that is three yarn overs for three millimeters and then three purl stitches for three quarter millimeter measurements. So anyway, if you wanna know more about this, I would just say go watch the Crimson Stitchery's videos on swatching, which have been very helpful for me and given me a bit of a kick in the butt to properly swatch for projects. So while well, I say that, and I'm never going to do swatches in the round, guys. I do all of my swatches knit flat but that's because my gauge depends so much on like the circumference of what I'm knitting, the size of what I'm knitting, and not necessarily whether I'm knitting in the round or knitting flat. That's a conversation for another day if anybody's interested in that. So yeah, I'm saying I'm starting this because I've officially started swatching and maybe next time I'll have a bit to show you, but this is, this is gonna be a long-term project. I'm not planning on blitzing through it in a month. I mean, I could if I wanted to probably, but that would be a bit excessive. It's, it's a lot of cabling, so we'll see how that goes. That is it for my current works in progress, and hopefully next month I will have more progress to share with you on those. Now I want to quickly talk about my one natural dyeing experiment in March, and then we'll get into what I plan on working next. So in March, I revisited avocados. Um, when you dye with avocados, you're extracting dye from the pits and the skins, not the green fleshy part. And you can get some really interesting pink salmon-y mauve colors, as well as some kind of more orangey tones from it. So this is my second time working with avocado. The first time I just did pits and it was really fun, but I, at the time, didn't feel like cleaning all the skins. But this time I saved a bunch of, of pits and skins and I decided to set them up in different dye vats so that I could compare the color because you get slightly different colors between the pits and the skins. You can mix them together if you want to, but whatever. Um, so, do I have these in the right? Yeah, I have these in the right order. Um, the ones in on this side, these are the avocado pits and they are more pinkish. And then these over here 
are the skins. They're a bit more orangey, a bit more brown. They looked like they really had a lot of orange in them when they were first dried, but they seem to have mellowed out a little bit since then to a browner color. So the lighter skeins in both colors are just like 20, 30 minutes in the dye pot, and the darker versions are ones that went in for a second dip, so you got more, uh, more depth of color, more saturation there. So really fun doing these, and I like seeing um, how different the colors are. I'm not usually a fan of pinks, but I've come to really appreciate anything that isn't like bubblegum Barbie pink. I hate like true pink, I hate neon pinks, but the colors you get from avocado pits are much more muted. They're more complex and um, more like mauve, and sometimes almost more like terracotta or rosy colors, and I really like the way that they look. So these are just the straight colors, just dip in and out of the dye pot. And then I did some um, modifiers on some other skeins. I was also experimenting with techniques like dip dyeing and trying to speckle. So I'll show you those next. For techniques, I did one skein that I dip dyed. So in this method, you just, you have this really long skein and you slowly lower it into the dye pot. So you go from the darkest color at the bottom because it's in the pot for the longest to the lightest color at the top because it's in the pot for the least amount of time. So this is the dip dyed skein. Um, I also, I think I did a second round on the tip to get the, the, the darkest color a little bit darker. And then I briefly dipped that end into some iron after bath. Um, to try to get a little bit more of a purpley tinge to it, which I was very successful in getting. I thought I had gone too far and then it dried and I'm very happy with the color in it now. Now when it's skeined up, it looks very similar to this other one. If you look at this one, it's a little bit more erratic. Um, this is the speckled one. So I put the skein of yarn into the avocado pit dye pot and then I took it out and I just dabbed iron water on it to try to get these patches of more like purpley colors. I didn't know what I was doing. Like it takes some time for the iron to really work into it, it spreads as well. So I was trying to do speckling and instead I got splodginess. It still looks pretty cool though. And in this version, probably because of the concentration of dye and just how I was doing the iron water. The darker patches are a little bit more gray than purple, whereas on this one, it definitely got some purpley hues out of it. Um, I think that has to do with the concentration of the avocado color um, when you then apply um, iron on top of it. So it came out really neat looking, but if I were to do it again, I would have to like be a little bit more precise with small drops of the iron water. So those are the technique ones. The other thing that I did was trying some different after baths. So I first started out by actually adding modifiers into the dye pots, so like adding iron water directly into the dye pot and letting everything like simmer in there for a while. But now I'm coming around to the idea of doing after baths because you can kind of control it a bit better and you don't have to split your dye pot into multiple pots on a stove or whatever. So I am mostly experimenting with iron and changing the pH. So these two skeins um, have been modified with vinegar to make it more acidic and then washing soda to make it more um, basic. And the vinegar just really paled out the color and then the washing soda brought out more of the pinkish reddish tone. So it's actually a little bit darker in color but not by a lot from just the, the plain avocado. So the, the vinegar one gave me an aha moment though, because my other one was trying to see gradations of iron water, and I basically got no differences in between my three. So I was doing one jar with a small amount of iron water, then one with a medium amount, and then one with a large amount. And they are pretty much identical. And in fact, the one that had the most iron water actually is kind of reverting, I think it's this one, it's kind of reverting to that paler, pinkier undertone. 
instead of being quite as dark and saturated as the small and medium ones. It's very, very slight differences. I'm not sure that you can actually see any differences on camera, but I was wondering why is this? Why is it that the iron concentration just didn't seem to have any effect? I was trying to be very, very light handed. So there should have been some differences, but I think the problem may be that I'm using iron water, which is a mixture of water, vinegar, and a rusty substance. I've been using steel wool, and it's the vinegar that might be the problem. It's used to, you know, make it acidic and to help, you know, break down the iron. Um, but it also changes the pH. So I noticed this when I did the, the vinegar after bath and then saw some of that same undertone in this higher concentration of, of, of iron water. So that may have been affecting all of my iron modifier experiments. I'm going to get my hands on some ferrous powder to skip over having the vinegar solution just to see if it actually makes a difference or not. But that is it for my avocado experiments. It was quite fun. I didn't get the exact depth of color that I was hoping for because I just didn't make a concentrated enough dye solution. But despite that, I managed to get visible results of all of my techniques. So I'm happy about that. I need to find something to do with all these little mini skeins though. <laughs> because I've got so many mini skeins dyed with food scraps and stuff, so yeah. And lastly, projects that I want to start next. I have too many things in my project queue. I need to do some smaller projects that take less time, so I want to do some socks. I have the curly whirly and wafer crunch sock patterns from the Crimson Stitchery. These are like really lacy summer socks and I really want to do them. So I'm going to dive into my stash and see if I have sock yarn that'll be I mean, like enough quantity to make these socks and get some little things done in April perhaps. Um, and then I can't resist, I have big projects as well. The really big knitting project that I desperately want to make is this cardigan I've been obsessed with. It looks like this. I don't know if you can see it necessarily, but there's this really beautiful pattern on the sleeves. Oh, it's so beautiful. This is the bindweed cardigan. The pattern is by Xenia Nidian, I think. Um, and it's from Making Stories issue five, which just came out a couple weeks ago, I think. I've been waiting for this to come out so I could buy it specifically for this cardigan pattern. I love it. For some reason, I'm just obsessed with it. Um, so yeah, and in fact, I kind of have the right yarn for it. It is made with a combination of a fingering weight yarn held double with some mohair silk lace yarn, which is something I really like to do. I've actually knit my balloon cardigan, which is the um, same kind of combination, and I love wearing that thing. It's so light and soft and squishy and beautiful. Um, so I actually have this gray yarn. Um, this is Knit Picks Twill Fingering in the color Carbon, I think. Gr oh, Graphite Heather. And then Knit Picks Aloft in the color Carbon. This is the, the Mohair Silk Lace Weight yarn. So I think I have three skeins each of these and I probably need to get one or two more skeins of each of these. For it, but that means I have enough I could get started on it if I really wanted to. Also, I need to order some stuff like bare yarn for, for natural dyeing from Knit Picks. So another yarn order is probably in my future. We'll see, we'll see though, because um, I really want to make this, but I think I should hold off on making more um, like super winter weather stuff until I've done my socks. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to justify doing all the things all at once and I, I don't have time. And then the last thing that I want to make is another sewing project. For some reason, I've really latched onto the idea of doing some sort of thick plaid winter skirt. Um, I really only wear skirts in the winter, so I'm usually looking to make ones that are very warm rather than light, flowy, drapey skirts. So I knew I wanted to do it in some sort of plaid, and while I was at Joanne's recently with my mother, I found this fabric. And I really like the look of it. It's this, I think, I think this is called houndstooth. And it's pretty much what I was looking for. I wanted something that was kind of gray and bluish or, or navy and 
what wasn't black but wasn't super light either so this was perfect i got five yards of it it's this really thick cotton flannel and now i'm second guessing about whether it can really be a decent skirt or not but whatever i got the fabric and i picked out a pattern for it which i don't know where it is i have no idea where it is oops um I raided my mother's pattern stash and of course I picked the one that my mother has made like three or four versions of the skirt before. We have we have very similar tastes sometimes. So um, I have the pattern ready to go, I have the fabric ready to go, and we'll see when I want to do this. Like I said, it is a winter skirt and I, if I make it now I wouldn't be wearing it probably anytime soon. Um, but I'm pretty excited about doing another skirt pattern and maybe doing like some of the finishing by hand. I think I would really enjoy more hand sewing. I'm more comfortable using a sewing machine now, but in the stuff I've done in the past, the parts that I really enjoyed and found just really soothing and calming were the bits where I was sewing things on by hand. So I need to, I need to do more of that. We'll see if I, if I do that with this pattern. It's not intended to be hand sewn, but we'll see. I think that's pretty much it, unless I'm missing something. It's been a very productive month for me. Like I've done so much reading, multiple audiobooks, lots of sewing, lots of knitting. This is probably not a sustainable pace. <laughs> but anyway, um, with that, I think I will wrap wrap this one up. Let me know if any of these looked cool to you. What are you currently making? Leave me some comments down below and I'll be back next month with another installment. Bye.